Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for Eve Arden in another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, they say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. And if that's the case, Connie Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, should feel a bit more hopeful about her bashful biologist, Philip Boynton. Yes, Mr. Boynton left town last Monday for a biologist convention upstate. And by Friday, I was confident that absence did make the heart grow fonder. The only trouble was it was this little English teacher's heart which was doing the growing fonder of. Mrs. Davis, my landlady, was discussing the absent one with me at breakfast Friday morning. Have you heard from Mr. Boynton at all since he's left Connie? Oh, of course, Mrs. Davis. I heard from him yesterday. He just poured his heart out to me. Really, dear? What did he say? Lift up the sugar bowl, his postcards underneath it. <laughs> A postcard? Let's see that. Hmm. Having wonderful time. Glad I am here. <laughs> then he says, no more for now. Writer's cramp must have set in. <laughs> That's just his subtle way of informing me that he's too busy to write me a letter. But he won't be gone too much longer. Well, I think you're foolish to sit around and twiddle your thumbs while he is gone. After all, there are other fish in the sea. Yes, but on my salary, it's a little tough to make the bait as attractive as it should be. <laughs> Although Mr. LeBlanc did ask me for a date last Monday evening. Mr. LeBlanc, the French teacher? That's right. Why, he's charming, Connie, and so handsome. Did you accept? Of course not, Mrs. Davis. I'd just seen Mr. Boynton off on the train. Well, the next time Mr. LeBlanc asked you to go out with him, I think you should go. Why, when I was your age, if a man with his looks asked me out, I jumped at the chance. When I was your age, I'll jump too. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll get another chance to go out with Mr. LeBlanc. He's been very attentive all week. In fact, he asked me to get to school early this morning so he could talk to me for a few minutes before class. Oh, he did? Yes, I told Walter Denton about it yesterday, and he said he'd pick me up in plenty of time this morning. That's what I like, a kid who keeps his promises. Come in, Walter. I left the latch off for him. Hiya, Miss Brooks, Mrs. Davis. Well, breakfast isn't finished yet, I see. Not like it's going to be when you sit down. <laughs> Pull up a chair, dear. Any news from Mr. Boynton since yesterday's postcard? No, Walter. He wasn't kidding when he said no more for now. Oh, well, you won't be lonesome. Not with Mr. LeBlanc around. Mr. LeBlanc? That's the second time his name has popped up in the last five minutes. Did you say <clears throat> popped up, Connie? Yes, why? I knew there was something I'd forgotten. I put two slices of bread in the Toastmaster over an hour ago. I'll be back as soon as I make a few extra slices. <laughs> We'll be leaving soon, Mrs. Davis. Don't make too many. Or too few. <laughs> now then, Walter, what's all this about Mr. LeBlanc and me? Well, if you ask me, there's something pretty continental going on inside that handsome head of his. Well, he has been rather attentive since Mr. Boynton left, but that could be common courtesy. Courtesy nothing. That's continental. <laughs> <laughs> Tell by the way he talks to you, Miss Brooks, the way he uses his native language. What do you mean, Walter? Mr. LeBlanc talks to me only in English. He may talk to you in English, but he looks at you in French. <laughs> well, if he does, I don't understand it. But Mr. LeBlanc does lapse into his native tongue occasionally. And just between us, Walter, I can't understand one word of it. You see, when I went to school, I studied much more Spanish than French for some reason. Well, what was the reason? A Spanish teacher named Jose Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I wouldn't want Mr. LeBlanc to think I didn't know what he was talking about. Well, don't let that bother you, Miss Brooks. Harriet Conklin's a whiz at French. She can interpret anything that you don't understand. Of course, she's a little young to interpret the way Mr. LeBlanc looks at you. <laughs> I wish you'd stop auditioning your sinuses, Walter. <laughs> well, look, Miss Brooks, I'm not trying to be fresh, you know that. But both Harriet and myself feel that it's about time Mr. Boynton was made to feel that he shouldn't feel so sure of you. How does that go again? 
<laughs> Don't you see, when he comes back, if there's a lot of buzz buzz about how you went out with Mr. LeBlanche while he was gone, maybe Mr. Boynton will leave the ranks of the walking dead and make his move. Well, it has been tried before. The plotting to capture one's mate is an age-old story, Miss Brooks. Why, if they were truthful about it, 95% of all the men ever born would have to say to their women, you made me love you. I didn't want to do it. From the picture, Jolson sings again. <laughs> of course, Mr. LeBlanche is an extremely attractive person. Sure he is. And there's nothing to it, Miss Brooks. All you gotta remember when you see Mr. LeBlanche at school is the three little letters... O-U-I. O-U-I. Fine. The next time Mr. LeBlanc asks me for a date, this little piggy will go wee-wee-wee all the way home. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. <laughs> uh, do entree. Ah, good morning, Miss Brooks. I hope I do not interrupt something. Oh, not at all, Mr. LeBlanc. I was just combing my cactus. <laughs> Pardon? This little plant on my desk here. Oh. One of my pupils gave it to me. It was quite a surprise the way he gave it to me, too. <laughs> he hid it on my chair. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Oh, merci, mademoiselle. Uh, what did you want to talk to me about, Mr. LeBlanc? Well, Miss Brooks, beautiful Miss Brooks, for some time now I felt that you are... Uh, as I look on you, Miss Brooks, I feel that you're not only a lovely-to-look-at person, but one who... Uh, Miss Brooks, are you listening to me? You lost me after beautiful. <laughs> I, uh, I, I know that we have not spent too much time in the company of each. That's very true. Uh, <laughs> however, what I wish to say is something that I do not too easily find the words to do it. And so I have taken the liberty of writing it down in this note. A note? Uh, oui. It is written in my native language, Miss Brooks. This still comes to me faster than English. You, you can read French, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> right. Then please do. <laughs> Here. Let's see. Uh... My cher, Miss Brooks. Ça me semble que nous allons... Uh -huh. <laughs> Pouvez-vous me faire... Uh -huh. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks? Well, from what I gather here, it's pretty obvious that I'll need some time to think this thing over. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you say, Miss Brooks, I suggest we meet in the school cafeteria at lunchtime. Fine. And then, until we meet again... J'essaierai de contrôler mes émotions. Je ne serai pas un petit gosse. Oh, I don't know. I think the Dodgers still have a chance. <laughs> Next year. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. And remember, Colgate's cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate Dental Cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities, help stop tooth decay before it starts. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, when lunch period rolled around, I hastened toward the cafeteria, hoping to find Harriet Conklin so I could get a translation of Mr. LeBlanche's note. As I passed the office of our beloved principal, however, Mr. Conklin stopped me with one of his typically warm and cordial greetings. Halt, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Trapped. I was just hurrying to lunch, Mr. Conklin. I... You usually are. I just want a moment of your time. I noticed this morning that Mr. LeBlanc stepped into your room for a few moments. And although I've never been a hearty advocate of faculty fraternization, in this instance, I think it's splendid that LeBlanc is making friends with someone. He's rather an aloof chap. No aloofer than some others, I know. Uh, he's quite a nice person, though. I'm sure he is. But to get to the point, Miss Brooks, I have a used car in my garage that Mr. LeBlanc said he wanted to buy a few days ago. However, since that time, he's been rather evasive. Although I hate to part with the car, it seems a shame not to consummate this deal once I've become adjusted to the idea. The more so since I was convinced that I had Mr. LeBlanc on the hook. Uh, interested. <laughs> what kind of a car is it, Mr. Conklin? It's sort of a composite, Miss Brooks. Stutz motor, I believe. <laughs> Quite old, of course, but it'll make fine transportation. Runs like a charm. Then why do you want to sell it? I can't afford all the repair bills. <laughs> That is to say, I bought a new used car about six months ago, and the price they offered me on a trade-in was so ridiculous, I decided to sell it privately. Oh. Frankly, I was amazed at the rapidly declining interest in the Stutz automobile. <laughs> Hence, I'm willing to part with it for a measly $50. I'd feel selfish about holding on to it. I see what you mean, Mr. Conklin. Why should you let that beautiful car rot in your garage when some lucky fellow could be pushing it all over town? <laughs> Miss Brooks, I am not a man to shilly-shally. I'd take it as a personal favor if you encouraged Mr. LeBlanc to go through with this deal. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, and I'm... And thanks for whatever efforts you put forth in this matter. Good day. Good day and thank you, honest Osgood. <laughs> Are you going to have lunch with the fabulous Frenchman? Eventually, Walter, but first I'd like Harriet Conklin to translate this note he gave me. He says he writes better in his native language. Note, huh? Oh, we're making progress, all right. Let's see it. I've had three terms of French. You've had three terms of first-term French. <laughs> I'd better wait for Harriet. Please, Miss Brooks. Harriet might be late. And you don't want to let Mr. LeBlanc cool his heels in the cafeteria, do you? Why not? Eating lunch with hot heels is very uncomfortable. <laughs> Now, give me the note, Miss Brooks. If it's not too tough, maybe I can translate it. Ah, yeah. Ça me semble que non avons un bien amiti. Oh, oh sure. Now, this is simple, Miss Brooks. It merely says that he thinks you're wonderful and that he has long worshipped you from afar. What? And that now he cannot stay away another moment, but must have a date with you at once. Well. I knew it, Miss Brooks. He's stuck on you. Now, go on into that cafeteria and give him a quick wee. I'll go as quick wee as I possibly can. <laughs> See you later, Walter. <laughs> now we're getting someplace. Wait till Mr. Boynton comes back. <laughs> Pardon me, Walter, but how long have you been standing here alone, cackling? Oh, hi, Harriet. I just translated a French note that Mr. LeBlanc gave Miss Brooks, and I... Oh, gosh, I forgot to give her back the note. No. But, Walter, you can hardly understand a word of French, even after three terms. Oh, well, that's all right. Neither can Miss Brooks. She was in love with a Spanish teacher named Gonzales when she was a kid. And that's why it was so easy for me to translate for her. All I had to do was make a guess at it. A guess? Sure. Oh, what would a Frenchman put in a note to a woman? It's got to be about l'amour toujours. <sighs> <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc is a romantic figure, all right. I'll bet he writes a beautiful love letter. Here, let me read it, Walter. Okay. Now, what does it say? It says, Dear Miss Brooks, as there is no other member of the faculty who can help me at this time, I must ask a favor. It doesn't sound very romantic so far. Well, quiet, Walter. Listen to this. I have promised to buy our principal's car, but due to a most mortifying shortage of finances, I must borrow $50 immediately if I am to keep my word. <laughs> Can you lend it to me, anxiously, Paul LeBlanche? How do you like that guy? He's not wooing her. He's biting her. <laughs> I'm 
sorry to be late, Mr. LeBlanc, but I had to catch up on a little reading. Oh, sit down, mademoiselle. As always, you look charming. And now then, about my notes. What is your answer? The answer? Oh, by all means, we. Oui. You mean it? Of course. Oh, 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 how marvelous. You are an angel, a dream girl, a dream girl. I'm also a luster cream girl. <laughs> I don't see why you should get so excited about it. After all, under similar circumstances, I've said yes before, you know. <laughs> you have. Oh, dozens of times. <laughs> you, uh, you must be a teacher a long time to be able to act so generously. Well, don't forget, I am also a woman. Well... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you have said yes to me. That is the main thing. Now tell me, Miss Brooks... Uh, uh, when can I pick it up? Pick it up? <laughs> That's a quaint figure of speech. Um, <clears throat> you can pick me up at 7.30 this evening. Oh, I was hoping I would not have to wait that long. Oh, you impetuous Frenchman, you. <laughs> yes, I, I suppose I am. After all, it takes a little while even to receive aid from the Marshall Plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> what am I laughing at? You better think of something mighty fast, Walter. It was your meddling that got Miss Brooks into this mess. Yeah, I know it, Harriet. And I know how embarrassed she'll be when she finds out that all Mr. LeBlanc wants is to borrow $50 from her. Oh, I wish we could think of some way to get her out of it. But Daddy's been trying to, un to unload that heap of his for six months, and he's never had a better offer. Gee, it's after 7 o'clock. Oh, wait a minute, Harriet. Say that again. It's after 7 o'clock. Oh, not that. The part about the better offer. Oh, never mind. Skip it. Harriet, if you'll excuse me now, I gotta get to a phone. I may not save Miss Brooks any embarrassment, but I just gotta save her $50. <laughs> You look absolutely lovely, Connie. I'm sure Mr. LeBlanc will be enchanted with you from the moment he arrives. Oh, it's nice of you to say so, Mrs. Davis. And now, if you don't mind, I'll stay here in my room for the rest of the evening. Oh, I don't mind. In fact, I'll close the door for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dear. Have a nice time. Da 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 I'll be right there, Mr. LeBlanc. Don't break your neck. It's not Mr. LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Conklin, this is an unexpected intrusion. A pleasure. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Well, you are a super salesman, Miss Brooks. I am? I don't know what you told LeBlanc in the cafeteria today, but it certainly nailed him down. He asked me to meet him here tonight to close the deal on that jalop, uh, that bargain I'm selling him. He asked you to meet him here? Oh, now, isn't that cute? He probably wants to take me for a ride. Did you bring it with you? Yes. I towed it over. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got the ownership papers right here, and as soon as Mr. LeBlanc Oh, arrives, I'll get it. You... Welcome, Mr. LeBlanc. Come on in. Oh, good evening, Miss Brooks. Well... Alone at last, eh? Yes, yes, indeed. You'll be alone in no time. I'm a man that likes to do business fast. Here are the ownership papers, LeBlanc. Take them. Oh, thank you, sir. But first, I... You're getting uh... a great buy tonight, LeBlanc, isn't he, Miss Brooks? Oh, a dilly. <laughs> Think of it. Just $50 for a car that's only been driven 129,000 careful miles. <laughs> By its original 12 owners. <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin, if you will wait one moment for me, I must speak with Miss Brooks alone. Will you come into the kitchen with me, Miss Brooks? The kitchen? But I... uh, Go ahead, go ahead, Miss Brooks. I'll wait right here in the living room. Probably needs a little more reassurance. Go to it. What am I, a teacher or a used car dealer? <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, the time has come. <laughs> now we can get together, eh? In the kitchen? <laughs> I, uh, I did not want to mention it in front of Mr. Conklin, but as I stated in my note, Miss Brooks, I will be very grateful if you will lend me the $50 immediately. $50? <laughs> yes. After you read my notes, that is the 50 you said we too. 
So that's what I said we to. Where till I get my hands on that Walter Denton? Denton? I don't understand. No, neither did he, him and his first term French. <laughs> Look, Mr. LeBlanc, I'll try to break this to you as gently as possible. About the 50 dollars. We? Oui. No, not exactly. In French, what's the opposite of we? Oui? No. That's it? I non got it. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you say no? Oui, oui, non. <laughs> but I assure Monsieur Conklin that the fifty dollars. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I see it all now, Miss Brooks. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> no, I'm not. Ho ho. <laughs> but Miss Brooks, after our meeting in the cafeteria, I, I, I thought. I know you did, but it was all a misunderstanding, Mister LeBlanc. I'd lend you the money in a minute if I had it, but I haven't. Honestly, I haven't. I'll show you what's in my bank. I'll even let you hold it up to your ear and rattle it. <laughs> well, naturally, Miss Brooks, I'm quite disappointed. But if it is, as you say, all a misunderstanding, perhaps I'd better return these ownership papers to Monsieur Conklin. The quicker, the better. After all, the evening is young yet, which is more than I can say for the car. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand perfectly. Goodbye, sir, and thank you. Oh, oh, I took the liberty of answering your phone, Miss Brooks. As it happened, the call was for me. I left word at home where I could be reached. Now then, Mr. LeBlanc... Allow me to speak first, sir. I, I am certain that your car is every bit as wonderful... Just, just, just uh, a moment. Uh, Miss Brooks, would you step into the kitchen with me, please? Why not? I sort of miss the old place. <laughs> uh, excuse us, Mr. LeBlanc. Miss Brooks, now that I've already given LeBlanc the ownership papers, the minute he hands me $50, the deal is official. You've got to help me talk him out of it. Talk him out of it? You mean you don't want him That to... call I just received was from a Mr. Horace Winthrop. He saw my car parked outside the house, and he offered me $150 for it. $150? He told me the minute he saw it, he went out of his mind about it. That boy needs shock treatments. <laughs> Now, I realize you have a way with Mr. LeBlanc. You can succeed in changing his mind. Hence, a proposition. If you can coax him out of buying my car, I'll split the $100 profit with you. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, he... As evidence of my good faith, I'm willing to pay you in advance. I just happen to have the cash on me, Miss Brooks. 20, 40, 50. Miss Brooks, there's $50 on top of that stove. In cold cash. What do you want me to do? Heat it? <laughs> Don't spar, Miss Brooks. I promised I'd meet Mr. Winthrop in 15 minutes. If you don't act quickly, it may be Pardon the intrusion, Mr. Conklin, but I could have returned home if you would only let uh, me Miss stay. Miss Brooks wishes to have a little chat with you, my boy. But, sir... I'll wait for you in the living room. Why won't he let me tell him I can't buy his car? He is only delaying my embarrassment. Uh, Mr. LeBlanc, there's not going to be any embarrassment. Hey, you... Hey, I, I don't understand. I... Oh, now I do... You and that sense of humor. Huh? <laughs> On the stove, my fifty dollars. Oh, now just a minute. That isn't. The... Oh, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Conklin. <laughs> yes. Mr. Yes, Mr. Oh, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Conklin. I have your fifty dollars. He certainly has. <laughs> Congratulate me. I am now the proud owner of a Stutz. <laughs> repair bills. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you failed. Give me back my money. Patience, Mr. Conklin, patience. Mr. LeBlanc, I forbid this sale. Give him back the 50, Mr. Conklin. Uh, Give it to him. Oh, of course. Here you are, LeBlanc. Uh, but, 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 Miss, Miss Brooks, There's I, something I... you ought to know about that car, Mr. LeBlanc. You can't get it started, no matter how hard you crank it. Its battery is dead, its spark plugs are dragging, and its rear end doesn't spark. <laughs> <laughs> May we. <laughs> Plus which, I think it only fair to tell you that the wheels are out of line, it has no radiator, no clutch, and no brakes. Well, Monsieur Conklin, I have come to the conclusion that I do not want your car. Gad, what a bitter pill to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to be running along now. Can I drop you somewhere, Mr. LeBlanc? Oh, you are too kind. No, he's only one kind. <laughs> But it's still early, Mr. LeBlanc. Isn't there something you'd like to do? Well, now that you, you mention it, Miss Brooks, there is. I know of a used car lot not far from here with $50. Oh, if you would drop me there, Mr. Conklin, something might catch my fancy. Very well. Come along, my boy. <laughs> oh, 
Good night, Miss Wilkes. Good night, my fancy. <laughs> and thank you for you know what. You're welcome for no, I don't. <laughs> the last time I saw Paris. What uh-huh. happened, Connie? Did I hear Mr. LeBlanc leave? Yes, you did, Mrs. Davis. But it's only 8.15. Where did he go? He went to a used car lot. But don't worry about him, Mrs. Davis. He should feel right at home there. What do you mean, Connie? Most of their motors aren't running either. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid... Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, five minutes later, while I was looking in the French dictionary for the translation to Why Did I Bother in the First Place, the telephone rang. Hello? Hi, Miss Brooks. It's me, Walter Denton. Oh, it's you, Walter. Now, please, Miss Brooks. I know you got a right to be mad at me, but you got to give me a chance to explain. I would have come over in person, but I wanted to wait until Mr. Conklin had left. He's gone, isn't he? Yes, Walter. Everybody's gone. Good. You see, the only way I could stop Mr. LeBlanche from putting the bite on you for $50 was to make sure that Mr. Conklin got a better offer for his car from somebody else. So I called a few minutes ago and offered Mr. Conklin 150 bucks. What? Sure. I told him I was a Horace T. Winthrop. You certainly are. <laughs> but you were a little late, Walter. Mr. LeBlanc has already bitten me for $50. You mean you had $50, Miss Brooks? Well, Mr. Conklin gave it to me, Walter. It was my commission for talking Mr. LeBlanc out of buying his car so that Mr. Winthrop could... But now there is no Mr. Winthrop, and Mr. Conklin will certainly want his... Oh, what's the use? If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. In hoc signo, veritas disputantum. What does that mean, Miss Brooks? That's Latin for, I should have stood in Nogales with Jose Gonzalez. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Mustard Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, here is actual factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the Palm Olive Lather way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before... Three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves, the Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream way. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.